guys, welcome back to Recordology. I couldn't say it better myself. <laughs> We're back with another awesome show today. Yeah. As of the filming of this, I have no idea what it's going to be. But I, I was just going to say, awesome. what's it going to be about? It's going to be awesome. Right. Where are we, by the way? We are at so the boardwalk yep. right in front of the Beach Club. Beach Club Resort. It's had dinner there, Cape May Restaurant. And uh, show them that, that way how yep. cool it looks. Sitting here on the beach and uh, sitting in a swing. It's beautiful. Stick around because you're not going to want to miss this. You're not going to want to miss this. Oh, this is going to be fun, you guys. I've been looking forward to this for some time. So a few years ago, we reviewed this. This is an M90 reproduction by New Wave Toys, and they make some of the coolest retro-inspired toys that are functional. Everything from miniature Coke machines to miniature uh, video game arcade uh, style change machines from like the 80s that are USB chargers and uh, many many other things as well so this was a limited edition version of the M90 this is the M90 mini and as you can see it's adorned with this cool purple and gold trim and this is one of my favorite parts here it's got a fully functional cassette door that is a little tight to open but when you pull it out there's this miniature tape which is not a real tape, but it, it's decorative, but it is it is really, really cool. This is the Slick Rick edition of this device here, and it is just the coolest thing ever. In addition to looking cool and being awesome, it also happens to be a very, and I want to stress this, very, very, very high quality Bluetooth speaker and radio. The sound quality on this is not a novelty it is serious business arguably the best bluetooth speaker ever the amount of bass that this thing has is ridiculous it also has an sd card slot usb slot it's rechargeable via usb c headphone jack. is that an aux yeah it's an aux input i thought it was a headphone jack and the uh what looks like a headphone jack on the front there is actually a jack for a wired remote control that is fully functional and all of this is a very, very, very close replica of the original M90. If you're not aware, the M90 was a JVC boombox of the 80s. It was kind of arguably the king of boomboxes. Absolutely. Now, this is the Mini. It's a lot smaller than the original M90. By the way, even LL Cool J's album had an M90 on it once. And yes, I know Tecmoan has talked about the M90 in the past. It's so iconic. It's such an iconic boombox. But... Even though this is the Mini, it is very, very, very functional. That aside, we're not here to look at this. We're actually here to look at two new ones. New to me, that is. This is the M90 Mini, and this is the M90 Micro. We looked at the Micro version of, of the purple one as well, the Slick Rick edition, um, back when we did that original video. However, today we're looking at these versions, which don't have an overlay, the Slick Rick overlay. These are just the original ones that are designed to look like the original JVC M90 of the 80s. So we're going to unbox them, take a closer look, test them out, of course, and we're going to start with the micro. So let's get into it. So a lot's happening here. This is sort of a combination of nostalgia, my love of audio equipment, and of history all rolled into one. You'll also notice that the packaging is true to the original styling aesthetic of the original M90. This is so cool. Specifically the inner boxes, check this out. I mean, this is literally what an M90 box looked like, but this says micro wireless stereo. And look at this down here. It looks like a uh, Dolby logo, but it actually says Replitronics and uh, the attention to detail, the color of the tape, all of this is just absolutely Superb. So let's continue to get into it here. Sometime, one time, a couple years ago, somebody was making fun of this knife. They said it was something like overly aggressive or, you know, it's just a knife. It's just a knife. Okay. We have the styrofoam here. Oh, this is so cool. 
Oh my gosh, it is so cool. What is it comes with a chain too. Oh, I didn't know that this one would have the chain. And the manual, also true to form. And a cable, it's a USB-C. And that's it for the box. But like I said, the box itself is kind of part of the nostalgic effect. So let's start with the chain. Chain, the chain, the chain. Yeah, I'm surprised. I thought this was ex I thought the chain was exclusive to the Slick Rick version. So yeah, you can uh, you can put this chain around. That's quite a chain. Wow. Okay. Uh, USB-C cable. You know what that looks like. And then the user manual. Service manual. Folds out. Tells you how to use it. So this micro version's functionality is a bit more limited than the mini. Got a protective film here. For instance, even though it looks like there's a cassette door there. Uh, it does not open, nothing comes out, and I believe less of the buttons work. I remember the other one came with, oh, maybe that was the mini that came with the button add-ons to make them a little bigger, but we've got the speaker sticker on there, and uh, this little tag up here, this little thing. I mean, it looks so cool. It looks awesome on the back. We've got the charging. Okay, so this uses a USB-C, not a USB micro, and it has a power button. But even the original like screw holes, where the things would have been, the antennas, although they don't really come out on this one, are still uh, reproduced. The attention to detail here is just phenomenal. And as you can see, fits in the palm of your hand. Uh, basically, this is a Bluetooth speaker, but it's a very, very cool Bluetooth speaker. Okay, looking at the manual here, you can see up here the variety of Bluetooth protocols, codecs that it is compatible with they are all lossy and some of the other specifications as well yes it's a novelty but it's it is cool and you know what if you were on the if you were you wanted a tiny and sometimes there is a use case for this sometimes i'm like i want a tiny little bluetooth speaker can fit in my pocket and you know take wherever with me but yeah it is a bluetooth speaker so let's go ahead and press and hold the power button and uh, see what happens here That was cool, that was a very cool sound. All right, so it is in pairing mode now, so I need to go to my phone. And a note about my phone. Yesterday, I upgraded my phone. Some of you know that I, four years ago, it was actually almost four years ago, it was November of 2020, so three and a half years ago, I upgraded to this and had been using it to film the show up until a couple of months ago, where I switched to the Sony SLR. Actually, it's a mirrorless. But I had shot many shows on this. We did many vlogmases from this and other phones as well. But this was basically everything for Recordology. Filming, editing, managing, uploading. So much Recordology history happened through this device. And it just started kind of wearing out. It got to the point where, you know, the touch screen wasn't quite as sensitive as it could have been. The speaker and microphones weren't working as well as they should have been. And it was time for an upgrade. So as of yesterday, I am on the newer version of the iPhone. Very thankful, it's kind of an early Father's Day gift. I have the uh, 15 Pro. I've never had a Pro before, so it's got the telephoto lens, the Dolby Vision, all that good stuff. We'll definitely be shooting some content for the show on here as well as managing the channel. And I'm very thankful for this device. But um, I just segue into that because of the fact that we're gonna be using the phone for a source for this Bluetooth device. So let me go ahead and pair to it and we'll give it a sound test. Okay, I found it on my device and I am syncing it now. Okay, that didn't take long. And uh, this one doesn't have the voice prompts like the Slick Rick one where it actually had Slick Rick saying Bluetooth connected and stuff. It was cool. It is very, very cool. All right, let's go ahead and play some music. Okay, this is Wallpaper by Kevin MacLeod. <laughs> for a tiny tiny device with tiny tiny speakers it sounded pretty good it actually had bass and i was pleasantly surprised i don't remember it sounding that good but for a tiny little hand-sized thing you could see that the uh, dust caps are pretty large proportionately to the rest of the driver 
So I think that they've specked out somehow some decent speakers. Those things can't be more than an inch, you know, at max, if not, you know, three quarters of an inch each. But a really, really cool little device. And um, yeah, it's definitely a novelty item, but it's functional and it's very, very cool. And as you can see, even compared to the Mini, which is in this box, it is tiny, tiny, tiny. So let's go ahead and open up its big brother, the M90 Mini. Okay, this is awesome. Very excited. Let's go ahead and open it up. I love the fact that even the packaging is like period correct. All right. That's awesome. It just looks so clean. Even the boxes back in the day were better than what we have now. Look at that. That is so cool. Iconic M90. Now, like I said, this one does have additional functionality. In addition to being a Bluetooth speaker, it's also a radio. I think it's FM only, but I could be wrong. It also can play music off of USB, SD cards. It has um, the mini decorative tape cassette, which you can get a couple different kinds of those. Like on their website, you can actually go and get a couple different kinds, including the clown tape, which is iconic and awesome there's the manual same you know design but bigger okay yeah so this is the one that has the the knobs so the idea with these is because from a styling and design point of view these need to be a certain size in proportion to the overall design it makes it a little bit hard they're a little fiddly and not all of these buttons and switches are real uh, a lot of them are decorative but some of them do work and we'll look at that closer but for the ones that are really tiny and real they give you these little uh, adapters, and they are metal. They're like aluminum, so they've got some weight to it. Good, good, uh, you know, texture to them, and all that good stuff. All right, over here we've got a cable. Now this one is USB-C. This one is USB-C. One thing about getting the uh, new phone is that I realized how much uh, all of the accessories for the 12 were the Lightning connection, and now. None of those work with the new phone because they're all USB-C. Awesome, so I do get the clown tape. That is so cool. And again, it's not real, it's decorative, but it's so cool. Look at this. This is just so incredible. I had these as a teenager, and man, I used the heck out of them. Very nostalgic to see that. Everything is in there. I mean, even the rollers, the little yellow rollers. And like I said, the, uh, the cassette case, the J-card, and even adhesive sticker labels. The attention to detail here is absolutely top notch. And you know what it's all about. These people care. Memo hex. <laughs> That's awesome. These people really care. You know what I mean? It's not, it's a labor of love. They're doing this because there's a passion behind it, not uh, just because there's a buck behind it. And that's not something you can say for everybody out there. So here's the remote. Let's see how it compares side by side with the other one. It looks like it's identical. So this is the remote control. Again, it plugs into what looks like the headphone socket. And what's funny, from a proportional standpoint, you may be saying to yourself, well, the original had a quarter inch, but to scale, a quarter inch at this scale equates to this eighth inch plug. So it actually works to keep the theming on point and all that good stuff. All right, let's go ahead and lift it out. I think that's it for the box, which is cool. And I don't want to throw it away because it is so cool. And then we've got the device itself wrapped in plastic, just like its little brother. Go ahead and try to be gentle about taking this out here. We've got a protective film up here. We've got a protective film right here. And we've got a protective film there as well. So there is a look at it. And again, I can tell you, Based on the other design, the performance will be top notch. And just look at the detail. Like look up here in the tuning bar. Again, this will be FM only, but you can see uh, decorative details here that are non-functional, just decorative. Usually I don't like decorative only stuff, but in this case, this product gets a pass. We've got VU meters there that are also decorative. A bunch of buttons here and switches. AM FM button right here is real. And these, this would have normally been like the microphones, stereo microphones on the original M90. Those will be decorative. However, the tweeters 
up here are real and so are the major the main speakers there we already talked about the remote uh the cassette door opens up it is a slow thing there so it kind of needs to loosen up a bit but okay it's a very slow descend on the uh, on the cassette mech there but we can put our tape in and it just looks cool and again it's totally fake it's just a, a pretend decorative thing but it's a cool design element so let's look here at this front panel i'll show you what's real and what's not uh, first of all this knob up here is the tuning dial now some of the buttons and switches do different things than what the original m90 was designed to do uh, just off camera above screen there you can see the selector at the top there scrolling left to right depending on where i have that position this is the volume knob right here. The next three knobs are the bass, treble, and balance. Those are real, and that is what you are supposed to use these little adapter knobs for. So if you want to be able to control it a little easier, you can put this on and adjust it. Now, as you can see, it does kind of does disturb the look of it a bit, so you may choose not to do that. On my other one, I did do it, but these purple ones right here. And I think that it, you know, it looks fine and, and whatnot. I think it doesn't really do anything negative to the look. But again, that's completely up to you. So this switch is not real. This one is not real. That one's not real. These are all fake. These knobs are decorative as well. The tape counter looks like there's a real counter in there. Like it's not just a sticker. Like it's three-dimensional. It looks like there's a real counter in there. But again, it is... Pre-10. Now these buttons down here are right. We have the power button right here. We have a mode switch, play, pause, transport controls, the eject switch for the tape deck. Okay, spinning it around back. Let's see if these antennas are real. They are, and they are telescoping. So that is cool. And on the back here, we have the USB-A connection, a USB-C connection, a micro SD card, as well as a 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch aux input. Now this realistic looking battery compartment does indeed open, but there's nothing in there. It's just for effect. Obviously the real one would have a bunch of D-sized batteries in there. And even the indicator of how those D-cells would be arranged is included here, which is amazing. Passive reflex, bass ports on the back add to the sound quality. Again, it is phenomenal. Look at the attention to detail here, like the FM external antenna jack, which was on the original, not on this one, is included. Like the molding accuracy is absolutely incredible. We do have like a foam, rubberish, foamish pad there. The handle is solid, it's not hollowed out. We got the little New Wave logo. And that's about it. Quality build, you see the speaker there. It's heavy, it's got a decent amount of heft and weight to it. It feels high quality, it does not feel cheap. It is definitely not light. But how does it sound? It sounds great, but I'm gonna show it to you as well. So let me go ahead and connect to this one and we'll give it a sound test. But before I connect to it with Bluetooth, let's test out the radio since we have that capability. I'm going to extend the aerials, the antenna, and press and hold power. I like the space age themes. Uh, it's probably going into Bluetooth mode by default. Let's go ahead and press the mode switch and see if it tells us what the inputs are. No, but it gives us a cool sound effect. So that's radio. You can see the radio LED lit up. If I press it again, it's probably going into aux USB mode. And I'm guessing that's Bluetooth and pressing it one more time brings us back to FM radio mode. So let's go ahead and test the FM radio dial. We're waiting for the sunlight. There's sunshine in every bite. Curbapeel, for your home or business, you depend on it for a great first impression. That's why homes and businesses all over our area depend on Evolve. Okay, so sound quality is amazing. Now, the compressed nature of FM radio always makes small speakers sound good, but the fact that these are truly good speakers 
And this is a quality built item. It's heavy, it's got metal pieces in addition to just the plastic cabinet itself. It is rugged and whatnot, makes it sound even better. I'm curious to hear what the Bluetooth is gonna sound like in a minute. Uh, also notice we got an FM stereo indicator in blue up there. Be curious if that's used for the Bluetooth connection as well. Now, keep in mind, we can plug in a USB on the back. So let me go ahead and try that with some MP3 files and we'll give that a listen. Okay, so a lot of times devices that have a lot of different inputs like USB, auxiliary input, SD card, etc., etc., will have one specific uh, mode for all of those. So when we flip to that mode, it'll check to see if there's a USB stick, if there's an SD card, if there's an aux input, and it'll go to whatever has something. So uh, I'm not going to demonstrate all of those. I'm just going to pick one, in this case the USB. And as you can hear, it detected it right away. And the transport controls now will also allow us to skip files that are on that SD card. Okay, so we've got the USB stick in there now. I've got it on pause. It started playing automatically. If we hear Patsy Cline, those are WAV files. And if we hear something non-Patsy Cline, that is an MP3 file. So let's hear what we got. Okay, so that is MP3. Let's go back. There's Patsy Cline. So both formats are supported. I'd like supported. to do one of my favorites that I recorded some time back. A church, a courtroom, and then goodbye. Awesome. That's really cool. And for people like me, I will definitely use that feature because I have a lot of digital music. I have a lot of analog music, physical media, but I've got a lot of digital audio as well. I just love it. Those are not the microphones, but there are microphones. They're actually right down here in what on the original would have been the microphone jacks for external microphones. These are the actual microphone itself. So you talk into this. These are decorative. Okay, time for the Bluetooth test. This is where we'll really get to stretch its legs sound-wise. So I'm going into my Bluetooth settings. I am looking for the device that's in pairing mode right now. And we are connected. Some more Kevin McLeod music. Test out the sound quality. up the treble a little bit. Bass control. It is true stereo. This is called Carefree. I wanted to show you their website really quick because they do have some amazing products. They make miniature video game consoles that are fully functional, uh, various types. They have everything you need to make like a miniature arcade at your house, even the little carpet and everything. And you can, and people have done this. Keychains, look at that. Isn't that not the coolest thing? The artwork you would have seen on the walls of the arcade back in the day. The micro, the mini, the replacement tapes, just all sorts of super geeky, awesome stuff. They've got a, a replica Walkman, the original 1979 Walkman. That is, I believe it's a USB charger. Look at that, a miniature Zoltar. That is so cool. A miniature cigarette machine. These are things that we remember, dude. These are things that we remember seeing so on their website obviously you can get everything i know that the uh this particular boom box here is carried on amazon for 159 dollars uh, but that's the only one that they have so if you want any of the other versions including this you need to go to their website i'll put links down below but super fun stuff right it's fun that's the thing about it it's fun and it's okay to have fun and we are now leaving epcot Yes. And we had a wonderful time today, did some great stuff. It's which, a fantastic day. If you want to see kind of what we did today, some surprises over on Rain's Place. Yes, come check it out. Check that out. It should be posted, probably not by the time this video is posted, but probably soon thereafter. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. But that's going to do it for today. So happy record hunting. We'll, we'll see, see you next time. time.